This is Eldritch Song of the Magic Online Clan Seraphim, and I've got another cube draft for you. Alright. So there's a couple of interesting cards. There's Sulfuric Vortex, uh, Captured, Green Sun. I mean, that's really about it. Um, Sulfuric Vortex would go into a, sort of like an aggro build. Capture would obviously go into sort of a um, blue combo type build. Um, personally, my favorite color to be playing capture in is, well, favorite shard really is Bant, um, but mostly green and blue, and Green Sun is one of those cards I'd want in the deck. Um, I have been playing that deck quite frequently, though, so I might want to try something a bit different this time. I think I'm going to go... Hmm... Between Capture and Sulfuric Vortex, I think Capture is just the best. I don't even... I mean, I, I don't know how I can justify not taking that card, even though I have been playing that archetype quite frequently, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it and uh, see where we end up. Alright. So we've got Blue Spell in form of Complicate, uh, lots of white cards, a decent green creature, decent removal in the form of Dismember, um, a Crater Hellion. Hmm. So it's either like grab white cards here or grab green cards, basically. Gerard's Verdict. Not, no, not really. Alright, so I guess it's between the white cards here and the best white card. Let's see, the best white card is probably Catastrophe. Then there's probably Kodama or Brutalizer Exarch. I'm going to go ahead and take Catastrophe here. Okay. So we've got a few interesting cards. Uh, Manalik, Willbender, Simic Signet, and Venzer. Um, in terms of blue cards, I like Venzer, I like Willbender, I like Manalik, but I think Venzer is probably better, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the Venzer and pass the rest of this. Oh, Library of Alexandria. Well, that's definitely the pick here. So it looks like we've got blue-white control so far. So I'll grab Library of Alexandria and pass the rest of these. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Nothing in there I really need. Okay. So we've got a couple of weird cards. I mean, I guess the card here we should probably pick is Arcane Denial. Plow Unders aren't really that great. These red cards are not really going to do much. And the black, I don't think I want to be splashing for that when I have a blue counterspell. Alright, so it looks like I'm going to be grabbing a Bribery here. Seems pretty straightforward. I like Repeal, I like Future Sight, but Bribery is just better. Okay. So I could take Dismiss, Phyrexian Arena, Hallowed Fountain, Signet. I mean, it's possible I could take the Phyrexian Arena and go, like, Esper. Which wouldn't be a terrible move. But Dismiss is just overall going to work in their deck no matter what, so probably better just to go ahead and cut that off right now. Yep. Alright, so this pack is pretty cool. So, we've got Callous Oppressor, which is mediocre, kind of. I, was, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not a great... It's not great either. Um, there's Impulse, which is actually not a bad filter card. And so the are also good bounce, but here I think I'm probably going to take Celestial Colonnade. Um, just because... Well, it's a great... It's a great mana fixer. Not that we're really going to need that in a two-color deck so far, but um, having a mana land actually can be quite awesome for a control deck, which does not intend to have that many creatures. So we've got the option of Pithing Needle or Thirst. I mean, we're probably not going to drop any artifacts, so this will just be essentially a draw two, discard two. No, draw three, discard two. I think I'd rather have a Pithing Needle for the sideboard. 
Right, so a duel, which we don't really need at this point. Two duels, or a wall of denial, which gives, actually is a decent creature, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that up. So yeah, we're looking to be pretty much blue-white control. Um, basically two creatures so far. Three technically if you count bribery. So what we do need is a few more mind control effects, um, like Vidalcan Shackles, mind control, treachery, those would be pretty nice. Um, ways to get rid of creatures, and probably a few more counter spells. So someone else obviously is in blue since, um, like for instance, Mana Leak is missing. But then again, we do get past, you know, Vinzer, Denial, Bribery, Dismiss, Colonnade, Wall of Denial. So probably nobody's in blue-white. And Deep Analysis comes back, which means blue's probably pretty open at this point. Incident, that's a fantastic draw spell, and we get back Complicate. All right. Blue is looking like a pretty good color to be in at the moment. All right, let's go ahead and grab the Signet. It's nice mana round. Alright, so none of these cards are relevant, but Uktavi Orangutan could possibly get played, so that's very unlikely. I don't think we're going to be adding a third color at this point, not considering that we're pretty strong in a two-color deck, but that's not really going to keep us out of a third color if something happens in, just, you know, in uh, packs two and three. And we get back locks it on Hierarch, which not too surprising. No one seems to be that impressed by that card. Alright, so there are basically three cards I'm looking at here. Um, Bane Slayer Angel, Worm Coil Engine, and Gifts Ungiven. Um, Sphinx of Steel Wind actually is not a bad creature. I don't think I'll be getting it back, and I don't want to be grabbing it now considering that it's kind of hard to play without you know, a black source or like a tinker. And I think overall, I like Baneslayer Angel the best out of this pack. Uh, Worm Coil, you know, Worm Coil Engine is pretty broken, and so is Gifts Ungiven, but Baneslayer is just a fantastic card. I don't think I need to uh, justify that one. But otherwise, these two creatures are pretty impressive. But Baneslayer is the pick here. Alright. So... Actually, there's not really much in this pack that we would like to play. Grand Coliseum possibly seems like actually the best card here. Um, I don't need any kind of weird aggro shadow creatures. Molten Tail Massacre, I guess, is a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd probably rather have the Massacre over a Mana Fixer we probably don't need. Alright, so this is a pretty nice pack. Well, really, there's only, I think, two or three options. There's um, Una, Queen of the Fae, Wall of Omens, and Enclave Cryptologist. Um, and the deck does need finishers, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the Una. Um, Wall of Omens and Enclave Cryptologist are both really sweet cards, but the Una is just can win games on its own, so that's the pick. Alright, Armageddon... Okay, well, unfortunately there are two really sweet cards in this pack that we want. Um, Grand Arbiter Augustine and the Dolphin Shackles. However, from what I've seen thus far, I'm fairly certain that the that no one else is playing blue-white. And the fact that Shackles is going this late, I mean, pick four is pretty late for the Shackles, means that no one passing to me is in blue. So, probably, I mean, there's a chance that the Arbiter can wheel... Um, I mean, the other card that would be nice is Journey to Nowhere, but I'm not expecting that to wheel. And that's much easier to be played. But Shackles here is the pick. It's creature removal and gives us a creature, so it's fantastic. And hopefully we'll get back the Arbiter. Because there's not really anything else in this pack that we would even remotely want. Except possibly the Zurin Orb in case we draw like a land tax. Or pick a land tax. Alright. So we've got Seagate Oracle, Fairy Conclave, 
Um, here I'm going to go ahead and grab the Seagate and possibly wield the Fairy Conclave, though I'm not sure about that. Um, maybe get the Azorius Guild Mage. I've never played with that card, and it doesn't really seem that good, but who knows. I'm going to go and grab the Seagate here. Alright, well, Durgar Hedge Mage, Seal of Cleansing. I think here, probably going to grab the Seal. I don't need an Idyllic Tutor, I don't really have any enchantments. And I don't really like that Tutor, to be honest. It's a bit, I mean, it's not, it's slow, but, I don't know, we don't really have good targets for it yet. It won this, let's see, there's 10 cards left, there are 10 players in the draft, so I'm not going to see any of these cards again. So I'd probably just rather err on the side of just taking the Steel of Cleansing. See, this destroys artifacts or enchantments. That one just destroys enchantments for us. Yeah, I'm taking the Steel of Cleansing. That could be a pretty sweet sideboard card. Okay. So we have about three options. There's Boomerang which actually is not as bad as it might seem, because it returns any permanent, so it hits anything, which makes it a fairly reasonable card. There's also Never in Y'all's Disc, which destroys creatures, enchantments, and artifacts, um, which might be actually another good card. And Coalition Relic. I think I'm actually leaning toward the disc here, because it's just basically a board wipe. And I think that's something we would like to have the option of doing. So I've got that plus Catastrophe as potential uh, board wipes. Uh, Catastrophe also can be an Armageddon in case for some reason we have, like, let's say, a Bane Slayer and some other huge creature out and they have nothing and we can just destroy all lands. And we've got some really sweet cards in this pack. So Vesuvian Shapeshifter, Kega, and Serendep Efreet. Not so much the effort, really, to me, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm more interested in the Shapeshifter and the Kega. And it's hard to say which one is better. I think the Kega is probably better in the end. Um, but it's too bad I have to pass the Shapeshifter because that actually is quite a good card. But Kega is a very good control card, which is where this deck is heading. Well, <laughs> we were heading there after the first four picks, so... And the Maloku, the Clouded Mirror. That's actually a fantastic card. So we'll be happy to grab that. Uh-huh. So a Turf Fairy. I don't really like Turf Fairy. Um, he's got a really powerful effect, giving everything in your hand flash. The problem is that he's just really expensive to cast and very mana intensive. But then again, I'm not going to be casting Tezzeret. I do not believe, no, that would be pretty useless, so I will grab the Turf Fairy, and it's possible he can make it in, but I doubt it. So we got a Sphinx of the Steel Wind and a Mana Tithe. Mana Tithe actually can be a reasonable counterspell. It's essentially a Force Spike that nobody expects from a blue-white you know, blue control deck. Um, and Sphinx... I mean, it's possible we could play that card. I don't see a reason why we couldn't. Um, and I think, ultimately, it probably is stronger than Mana Tithe, so I will grab it here. And uh, if there is a way to splash it, I will do that. Right here, I don't really care about any of these cards. Um, but let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead and take, I guess, the Words of War. That's the only card in there that can really do too much damage to me. Alright, so Psychotog, Arcane. Well, if we are going to try to splash black, might be good to grab this Esper uh, Tri-Land, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And Talarian Academy is going late. I guess nobody tried to draft the Artifact deck today. And Azurin Orb, okay. And the last pick, Nicole Bolas Planeswalker. Well, I love that card. It's just too bad we're not playing in those colors. Chroma Angel of Wrath. Chroma Angel of Wrath. Huh. 
So that cost eight, and that can be a pretty big beating. It's possible they could wheel. I don't want to have too many higher level bombs. I think it might be better at this point just to grab like a Gilded Drake to keep the curve low. Yeah, it seems like a good enough plan at this point. Or I could grab a Demonic Tutor and try to go with this Black Splash plan. So that seems a bit weak also. Well, then again, Tutors are pretty broken. And do I really need either of these two blue creatures? Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and take a risk here and grab the Demonic Tutor and see where that takes us. And... Personally, I think that paid off because we just got past a Mind Twist. And this card is completely and utterly broken. Um, the Metamorph and the Palancron are both fantastic creatures. And Overrule is actually a pretty good card. But I don't see how I could pass a Mind Twist. So it looks like we're going to be finding a way to splash black. Alright, so we got Forbid, Sower of Temptation, Preordain. This one's a bit more difficult to uh, analyze here. Um, Ponder and Pure Dame in the same pack is a bit saddening. Um, I think, though, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Sower. I'm not sure about that last pick, but hopefully it'll pay off. So we got Twin Cast, Psionic Blast. Sonic Blast might actually be a reasonable card, considering we don't have that many answers to creatures. And hopefully we can wheel Twin Cast. Not that I really need Twin Cast, but it's always nice to have the option to like Twin Cast to capture. Alright, so we got a Mana Crypt, or a Cryptic Command. I'm surprised Mana Crypt keeps going this late. You'd think people would be jumping all over that card. Um, I'm almost afraid to grab the crypt because we're not, I mean, we're a control deck, so we're not really a ramp deck. And having that card out for a long period of time would basically just kill you. Um, here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the cryptic command and pass the rest of these. And, um, yeah, that seems like the best plan. Alright, and here I'm going to grab a Ronom Unicorn. Seems like the best card here for us. The only card for us, for the most part. Alright, so we have the option here of a Frantic Surge or a Remand. Um, I like the Surge, but I think Remand is just better here. Counter spells are awesome. Yeah. Upheaval. Upheaval. Or Isochron Scepter. Let's see what. Let's see what we have for Scepter. Arcane Denial. Um, let's see. Arcane Denial. Not really that much. Remand. And Demonic Tutor. All very solid cards. And what would we be taking over? Possibly a Morphling Magpie Upheaval. I don't think Upheaval really is going to do too much for the deck. Though I have seen it be pretty broken. Though it's more it's a more of a ramp type card, but... Maybe we can... We, in order to get, like... To, in order to make this card effective, we need to have, like, 11 or 12 mana. And I'm not sure I see that happening. So, it's between Morphling, Magpie, or Scepter. We've got three targets for the Scepter. All fairly decent targets. Huh. Haven't really played with the Scepter, so it might be worth it, but... I feel like Morphling or Magpie would just be so much better. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give the Scepter a try. We'll see whether it makes main deck. I think it's worth giving a shot. Like I said, I haven't played with it before, and it's worth testing out. And getting a scepter on like a like demonic tutor or like any of our two cast spells would be pretty insane. So if we can manage to pull that off, I think it'd be worth it. 
All right, so we have a time reversal and a wrath of God. And while I do actually like time reversal, I don't see why I should pass up a wrath, so I will be grabbing that. That's what white decks do. They wrath things. They destroy everything. We've got three ways to do that now, which is pretty positive. Okay, wow. Actually, we, there's like two cards we really want. Um, Ancient Tomb and Moat. Um, here I'm going to have to take Moat because Moat can actually just shut down certain decks. They just have no way at all to win. Um, and that by itself means, it's like, I mean, in some, you know, cause like, you know, in certain decks it's just an auto win card, which means it justifies picking it up here over everything else. Ancient Tomb is a really good facilitator, but it's not going to, it's not going to be automatic win against any deck. So, Moat is the pick. That's too bad, because I would like to have an Ancient Tomb. I think that fits a lot better into the deck than in Mana Crypt because we can activate it when we need to and otherwise let it sit there and not kill us. But so far the deck looks pretty insane. We got some pretty broken cards. Library of Alexandria, Capture, and Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist. So it looks like we're going to be splashing black because, I mean, I could justify not splashing black for like the Sphinx or what have you, but Mind Twist is, there's no way I can not play that. Okay, so Gilded Drake or Mana War here is our two choices. I don't really want Puppet String, so that's not really an option. Uh, we can bounce or we can take control of a creature. I think ultimately I would like to take control of a creature more than I'd like to bounce one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Overrule here. I don't want to push my luck with the uh, the black cards. And Overrule is a really good counterspell. Well, a reasonable counterspell. Alright, and we got back a Ponder. So someone took the Preordain, but I'm pretty happy with a Ponder. And none of these matter. I'll take the Jackal Pup and the Is It Signet. Alright, so that's the deck. And actually, I think it looks, well, on paper at least, it looks pretty amazing. But we'll uh, take it in the Magic Online, do some deck building, and play some matches. So I'll see you there. All right, deck building time. So looking at my list here, I'm pretty heavy blue, a little bit less white. Um, almost gonna probably make a mono blue deck here, but I think I got some pretty awesome white cards here that are worth playing. So let me pull those out. All right, so those are the white cards I want to play. Plus wall, the Nile, and overrule possibly. All right, so now we've got Ponder, Drake, or man. Let's go ahead and just grab all of these. I think. Don't see a single card in here I don't want to play. That's 23 right there. There's Una. There's Sphinx. Here are my two black cards. Let's see. Shackles. Disc. Those are the cards I for sure want to be playing. Alright, so I've got a 30 card deck. I need to get rid of 7 cards somehow. Okay. I personally think that Mind Twist is probably worth it. So, I'm going to try to leave that in if possible. But I could take out a Demonic Tutor. I could take out a Isochron Scepter. I could take out a Psionic Blast. Let's see. I like all of those. Teferi is not going to get played. That's a good save. Don't want him. Catastrophe. Disc could possibly come out. I'm not sure whether I want to take out a disc or a Wrath of God. I don't know if I want to take out all my board wipes. Oh, well, I'd be left with two board wipes, which is not a bad number. Hmm. In terms of finishers, I've got. One, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty good number. Gilded Drake could possibly come out, so let's put that over there. I don't really want to take him out there. I like him on the curve. Shackles, Disc, Wrath of God, Cryptic Command, Dismiss. I guess Wrath of God can come out. Hmm. Overrule could probably come out. One more. 
So in terms of counter spells, we got one, two, three, four, five. That's not a bad number. I took out one, which is probably the worst of the bunch. Could be subbed in for like Arcane Denial, depending on what kind of deck I face. Alright, so I need to get rid of one card here. I wonder if disc could become could like if I could put Wrath of God in here instead, take out the disc, and possibly put disc in depending on what else comes in. Because it really depends what kind of deck I'm facing. Like I'd rather I guess I might for most decks probably want to be able to kill creatures instead of artifacts and enchantments. This is a bit faster, or uh, Wrath of God that is. But if I place a deck that needs to be, you know, have all the artifacts wiped, that's certainly an option. Um Wall of Denial could be my weakest card, though I really do like it in this deck. But the mana could be awkward. Hmm. I think the two black cards are worth splashing for. Still. Yeah, I'll take out Wall of Denial. That looks like it's the only option I really have. Alright, so. We're playing our three lands. So we've got one, already two blue sources, two white sources, and one black source. So we've got a few double costed spells here and white, and we just need one mana of each of the others. So let's go to Zendikar. We're playing 17 lands. I could play 18 land and bump up the card count to 41. That wouldn't be terrible. So let's see, we've got already got let's go with 10 blue. And let's see. At least two black sources. At least well, two additional black sources, and the rest can be white. So let's go to where are my plans at? Alright. That's 40. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 white sources. No, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 white, 10 blue, and 3 swamps. Um, that could be enough, actually. Because the shackles need the islands, but those islands should be enough. We got one, two, three, four, five, six white, ten blue, three swamp. Hmm. You know, I think that probably is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and try this build out. I think it I think it works. Um, I mean the mind twist is a bit loose. It's a bit of a miser card, but then again, like it's just so powerful. And I think it'll probably come out of nowhere for most people. And that's kind of what we're going for. And we have some good sideboard options, depending on what kind of decks we face. So overall, I like the way this deck looks. The mana base I'm a bit worried about, but I think it'll work. So I'm going to save this and play some matches, so I'll see you there.